we're feeling to get to the finish line. That's where we're at right now. So, last presentation of the day, uh, James Kennedy, uh, penetration tester. He's my favorite speaker of the day because he's a new Tiger fan and there's not a whole bunch of them around like that. So, um, uh, with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to you. It's very, very qualified. Uh, we just learned what a pen test was and what a pen test isn't. We're going to go a little bit further this time, talk a little bit about um, mobile and, and uh, penetration testing. So, James, take it away. All right, thank you. Hey guys, I'm James Kennedy. Uh, today I'm going to give you guys a kind of a crash course in mobile penetration testing. We got kind of a short talk, and there's a lot of content to cover, so I'm just going to kind of dive right in. Uh, there's no way that I'm going to be able to talk about every single tool that's out there. There's a ton of info. So I encourage you guys after this to just go out, play with the tools, get familiar, and just start digging in and playing with stuff. Uh, so with that, I'm going to split this up into three sections. I'm going to go over kind of just setting up a lab, getting your devices proxy, stuff like that. And then on the second section, we'll dive into static analysis. And then after that, we'll go a little bit deeper and touch on dynamic analysis likely. There's a lot in that section, so we're just going to kind of glaze over it. But let's dive on in. So lab setup. Basically, what I'm going to cover is black box testing and how to get that set up for Android and iOS. So here's kind of the things you're going to need. So starting with Android, you really need a device that's rooted so that you can have root access that's going to allow you to do most of your tasks. You can get away with using emulators, but it's not as easy in some circumstances. There are applications out there that just are not going to run on an emulator for one reason or another. So when I start a test, I usually have a device ready to go, and maybe I start with an emulator just because it's easier to get spin and spun up and proxy. Um, so that's what I recommend you guys have. With iOS, it's pretty much mandatory that you have a device, a physical device, and you need to be able to get a jailbreak going on that device. Uh, the simulators, if you have a Mac and you can run the simulator, isn't actually going to run the same code. If you're doing a black box test and you're just downloading the application from the Apple Store, you're not going to be able to run that on a simulator, so you need that physical device to get things started. Um, for proxying, so that you can monitor network traffic. My go-to is Burp. I've been using that for years. It's you know, my bread and butter. So you can do that, or Zap's a good alternative too. And I'll kind of walk you guys through how to get that set up here in a little bit. So a little bit more details. For Android, basically you just need two things when you're getting your emulator and or device get it going. Setting up the Android debug, debug bridge, or ABB, is going to be pretty much essential. It's got a ton of really powerful functionality. You can do logs, you can push and pull files off there. Uh, this ADB Connect is actually how you can connect the debug bridge to your device over Wi Fi. So that might make your life a little bit easier if you don't feel like plugging it in and uh, plugging it all the time. Um, you can drop the shell over ADB, and there's a bunch of functions in there, so really get familiar play around with that tool. Expose framework, this is going to kind of come into play later on in the presentation, but it gives us some runtime manipulation functions and it's going to help us bypass SSL pin in certain circumstances. So I just go ahead and throw that on there and get it up and running. That way we have it if we need it. iOS is a little bit more complicated. So if you've ever did work on a device, you're probably familiar with Cydia. This is going to give you guys access to a lot of packages and tools that are going to be important. Two of the main ones are going to be Aptitude and OpenSSH. Um, OpenSSH, obviously, you're going to be able to get into the device and kind of play around with things in a shell environment. Most of the time, your default root password is going to be Alpine. So if you do install OpenSSH and have that listening, you're going to want to change that password uh, just for safety. Big Boss has a couple of key functions that are going to come into play if you're testing these things. They include wget and SQLite so you can interact with some of those databases that are going to be on the device. 
the this advanced commands uh, library adds a couple of more command line tools, finger, PS, stuff like that that's going to let you get a little bit more information as you're doing things on the device. The IPA installer is basically a command line tool that lets you remotely just install IPAs on the device. So throw that one in there because it just makes things a little bit easier. So that's how I go about just setting up a basic environment so I can get into both devices and start doing basic tasks when I'm pen testing. So now let's talk about static analysis. This part is basically my very first step when I am finally ready to start taking apart an application and figuring out what's going on in a mobile scenario. What we're doing is just taking the package from the Play Store or the Apple Store and or just you know third party from your customer from your client and looking at the package, taking it apart and figuring out what we can glean, what information, what potential misconfigurations are there in the package just by itself. So this is basically the basics of the first step. So for Android, here are my go-to tools that I'm gonna walk you guys through. APK tool is a powerful command line utility that's gonna let you unpack the APK file, which is the Android package and take it apart, it's gonna give you some low-level code, small code, if you feel like diving in and getting on that assembly level. This tool is gonna give you that. Um, the mobile security framework has been a go-to for me in terms of just quickly spinning up a GUI interface, and we'll cover this. It's really easy to use. You can get some really good information right off the bat just by dropping your APK. APK into that. Bytecode Viewer, we're going to use that later to get the actual source code off of a uh, Android application. So iOS, iOS is a little bit different when it comes to static analysis because unlike Android, we're dealing with an actual compiled binary. And so you kind of have to go to your reverse engineering tools to get any sort of information during the static analysis phase. O-Tool, Class Thump, these are kind of my go-tos. They're going to give you some information, but it's not going to be great. MobSF, which is the short for the mobile security framework, is going to give you some of the same info in that GUI interface, and it's just easy to drop the package in there and get it right off the bat. So here's just some basic output from an APK tool usage. You just point it at your package. It unpacks everything. You can see here there's an Android manifest. If you were to look at that, it would give you tons of information about what's going on on the actual application. And we'll show a little bit of that later. As you can see, there's a directory that's going to have your small a code. And this is a good way to see what's inside the package. And this is actually an important step that I'd like to remind people to do because it looks like, OK, yeah, we got some stuff. And this is pretty trivial. but I've actually found plain text passwords, private keys, all kinds of goodies just sitting here in these packages, and it's production. Like these are on people's devices, right? So you don't want you you want to make sure that your client's not accidentally leaving anything in there that they don't want the world to know about, right? So it's an important step. All right, so now I'm going to walk you guys through how I go about getting access to the source code for an Android application. Basically, the first step, you just unzip the APK, and this is different than the APK tool, which is actually doing some other procedures to get that small code. But if you just unzip it, you're gonna get some different files, and one of the files that you will get is this classes.dex file, and that actually has the bytecode of the application inside there. And what I usually go to is I just spin up bytecode viewer, with just that one single command and point it, I point my code viewer to my classes.dex file, and that's it. I have source code here. It's searchable. You can find all kinds of good stuff in here. You know, developer comments, cryptographic functions, you know, hard coded keys, all that kind of stuff. You really want to dive in on it and just see what's going on with the application. So just, it's not 
perfect. You can, some decompilers do a better job than others depending on what your actual Android app is running. For example, hybrid applications kind of have some stuff that I've found. I have to change decompilers to get certain classes to pop up, but for the most part, this one will go too. So now I'm going to talk about Mobile Security Framework, or Mob SF for short. This is, like I said, a powerful tool. Um, I'm going to walk you guys through how to just get it up and running really quickly and just drop your applications in there. It will handle Android, iOS, and Windows apps. I've never used Windows apps, but if you come across them, then you know this tool can handle it. So they have a Docker container out there on their GitHub, and I'll have a reference slide at the end with all these tools and different GitHub repositories where you can go and like find all this. But just two commands, and it's up and running, and it's looking on you know port 8000, and all you gotta do, point your browser there, and this is, it's this easy, you can just drag and drop your APKs or IPAs, which is the iOS package, in here. And it's gonna do some analysis. Basically, I use it for static analysis mostly, but it has a couple of other functions. It does have a dynamic analysis toolkit built in where it will spin up an Android VM and try to do some analysis on it. I haven't had much luck using that because I think it's an older VM, so some of the newer applications aren't actually able to run on whatever version they have. Um, so I have some other tools that I usually go to for that. But another cool thing that they've implemented is a API backend. And I don't have experience with this, but those of you who are looking to do some DevSecOps might look at this tool for integration into your pipelines because you can automate uploading and just doing some basic analysis on your packages and getting that info. So here's what it looks like once we get the package analyzed, and this happens really quickly. This is the Android output, and you can see there's just a ton of information about basic info about the package just right here at your fingertips. Some of these are IPC mechanisms that we want to be aware of. If you see the providers over there, that's actually a database that, is, that the application is interacting with. And you can see that it's marked as exported. And that's important because if your database is exported, then it can actually be interacted with by other applications on the device. So right off the bat, we can just check and make sure that our application isn't having any basic misconfigurations that we need to be aware of. So to give you ton, there's a ton of other options here. I encourage you guys to go play with it. Um, really good info. So, but the best part, in my opinion, of this is that all that stuff we did with finding the source code, it does it for you automatically for Android applications, and you, it's searchable. So you can just search for password, and here's all the Java files that we compiled, and it found that in there. So you can just quickly draw the package in and start searching source code right off the bat. It makes things really quick. Here's the iOS output. Like I said, static analysis on iOS isn't as good, but it's still going to give you some base information to start fingerprinting and going off of. And it has a couple of, of the uh, reverse engineering things built in. You can see there's a class dump. Uh, you can run strings. This view info plist is actually kind of similar to the Android manifest that I talked about earlier, where it has some basic configuration information, and you can kind of view that to see what's going on with the application. So those are kind of my go-to initial steps for static analysis. Now, dynamic analysis. This is kind of where the fun begins when we start to think about, you know, hacking and like what we have to do to get that set up. I'm going to go over some tools and techniques for setting up a proxy, and then we'll some runtime manipulation and stuff like that with some pretty cool tools. So proxies, this is just your basic bird proxy. You want to have, if you're using physical devices, you want to have Wi-Fi access so that you can point your physical device at your proxy. And you want to make sure this is burp. Normally, by default, burp is listening on localhost, so you want to edit it and make sure that it's pointed at 
that Wi-Fi IP address. So you set it up and get it listening. And for Android, getting it set up on a device that is running a version less than some <coughs> other node is pretty straightforward. All you gotta do is get first root CA on the device, and you can just go through the uh, device's actual UI and the settings. There's install, you know, a root CA from the SD card. This AUB push is just putting that CA on. That's just how you would put it on the device. And then you can just point your Wi-Fi proxy settings in the network settings, and it's good to go. Unfortunately, in everything above Nugget, uh, Android's a little bit harder. They stopped implicitly trusting user installed CAs on the device, so we can't just put it on the device and configure it really quickly. There's basically two options, and I usually go for the first option because you just do it once and it's done. And what we have to do is install the CA on in the system partition as a system CA. So basically, we're trying to get that installed on that system status instead of user. And I'm going to walk you guys through that. There's a really good blog out there on uh, Rofnop, and I'll link this at the end of the presentation too. Yeah, I highly encourage you to check it out. It goes into this more in depth, but here's kind of the basic things that we have to do. We have to convert the certificate into um, the format that Android is expecting. We have to remount our system partition so that it's actually writable. And then we push the cert onto there, move it into the correct directory there, and then set the correct permissions. And this can actually be a little complicated on emulators. A lot of times people try to do this same thing and it'll, it'll, it'll tell you, uh, you can't change, you can't mount the system partition, blah, blah, blah. And you actually have to use a specific command. If you're going to use an emulator, you can list out your AVDs, which is going to give you the list of emulators that you have available. And you can actually boot it with a writable system partition. So if you find yourself using an emulator and you're trying to go down this route, it took me a while to find this, but there you go. All right, so on iOS, we don't have to deal with any of that, which is awesome because Burp has this mobile assistant app, which is just like beautiful. You can just point your proxy settings in here, point it to your Burp instance, uh, you can toggle it on and off. You can install the CD cert all from this iOS app. And down here, you notice this injected app section. This is actually, if you point Burp mobile assistant at your target application, it'll actually bypass the SSL pinning on that app for you. So it makes it super easy. And I have that asterisk up there because I have actually had at least one or two apps where this wouldn't bypass the SSL pinning. It kind of depends on how the app is set up. But for most cases, I'm going to say that this is going to get the job done. So that makes it super easy. Also, I'm going to cover a couple other ways to do this because it doesn't work on iOS. It only works on 10 and below. So if you have a device that's you know more up to date, you're not going to get this uh, working until they decide to update it. All right. So with that being said, that's kind of how I go about setting up some proxies. Um, if you can't if you can't use mobile system on iOS, it's pretty similar to the Android where you just go through the UI and then point your proxy settings in the network. So um, that's pretty straightforward. And now I'm going to move on. I'm going to talk about a couple of tools that are going to help us kind of do a little bit more in-depth management when we're pen testing. So MWR Labs has a tool called Needle. And it's a command line interface. And it's been around for quite a while. It's pretty useful. You just have to install the agent on the device. And it'll give you some settings, um, a port to point it at. And then you just run this on your host machine you have access to all of these modules. And it makes doing some of these tasks, tasks a little bit simpler because these modules are just built in. You can see that there's a class up module and some freedom modules in there. Um, some of the more powerful options 
that I like to keep in mind is that it has this dynamic monitoring where you can actually monitor the clipboard or whatever files are being touched by the application at any given time. It'll actually alert you if it's seeing resistant rights on the system. And it has its own built-in SSL pinning bypass, which can be useful. And that's just the tip of the iceberg is kind of module. So for iOS, this is a good option um, to go check out. They have another, MWR has another kind of brother to, the, to that one, the <coughs> browser, which is the same thing, but for Android. And it has a lot of the same kinds of modules. I don't find myself using this one as much just because you have you already have ADB, which is a pretty powerful, you know, you can just drop into a shell immediately, push and pull files, and you, you can interact with IPC in this and also with ADB. So you can check it out if you want. Uh, it's definitely useful. Um, I just use, choose to use ADB. So those are some uh, tools to check out. And these are a couple of my favorites, actually. When I'm thinking about actually having to get down and dirty with iOS and like do some dynamic analysis stuff, Frida is one of my favorite tools. And it's quickly growing on me just because I think that it's so useful and you pick it up pretty quickly and it's pretty powerful. So this one, it can do a lot. Frida, and I'll talk about inspected after this, but Frida, you have SSL pinning bypass at least in the right. Um, local authentication is a breeze to bypass with this one. Um, you can do all sorts of monitoring stuff. One of the coolest things is this link down here to a work extension called Frida, which is really cool. What, it, what this actually does is it creates bridge between Frida and Bird. So if you have an application that's running its own cryptography and you're seeing HTTP request, post request with like just a blob of crypto in there or something like that, it'll actually let you inside Bird hook into the functions that are already there in the app, decrypt that data, and then re-encrypt it so you can just sit there and kind of play with whatever the application is doing at runtime if it's using some, some functions that you have to be able to figure out easily. So that's pretty powerful. I would check that out. Um, there's also a GitHub repo that I've linked at the end here called Awesome Frida, which is basically a curated GitHub repo of a bunch of different Frida scripts that do all these things. And it'll point you to SSL ping bypasses that work for various situations and just all kinds of cool little things that you can do. So I highly recommend checking that out. Inspectage is a little bit less known, um, and it's a good GUI interface for Android only. This is what it looks like on the device. Basically, you point it at your target app, uh, you set up this ADB port forwarding, and you can kind of hook into and monitor the uh, application at runtime. So here's the dashboard that you're going to see if you, if you get it all set up. It's going to give you a ton of information about the package. Uh, up there at the top, you can access Logcat, take screenshots, um, and you can see these little notifications that it actually prompting you like, hey, this application is running some crypto functions, it's making HTTP requests, it's accessing the file system, you know, whatever you're kind of interested in taking a look at, you can actually dig a little bit deeper and see what the application is doing at the runtime. So those are my two go-to dynamic analysis tools if you're looking at getting into mobile application pen testing. That's kind of all I have for you guys for tools and techniques. You know, here's some references. I highly recommend checking out all these.